of lab will, will focus on this, okay? All right, so um, what I'll start with is, I'll start with venous stasis. So, okay, between these two legs, I shouldn't have told you, I actually don't use it, so you can just describe it, but this, <laughs> this leg is going to show you a different presentation as compared to this leg, okay? And you can probably already begin to see that. So, in starting with this condition, okay, so what we're gonna speak to here is we'll start with, of course, always the etiology, so what's causing this, and then we'll speak to the pathophysiology of that etiology, but then specifically, let's just begin by physically stating what we see, okay? So don't compare yet, just tell me what you see. Go ahead. Okay, varicose veins. Brown skin. Edith. Petechiae. Okay, petechiae. Brown skin. Christy. The brown skin. Brown skin. skin. Yeah. Yes, here. Good job. I'll tell you what that's called. Ulcer. An ulcer. It's what else? Very... Come on, Nicole. Edema. Good job. It's edematous. A lot, very large, right? What else? Like Come on. The toenails. Good job. Look at the toenails, right? Overgrown toenails, right? What else? Sloth. Sloth. Good job. There's a sloth. Escar. Uh, Escar. 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 Does a sloth um, mean like in stage of bone? We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. So these are not pressure injuries, okay? They're caused by something else. What else? Describe the wounds. Dead. Regular or irregular wound margins? Irregular. Irregular. What else? So you can't you can't quite show this because it's this is just you know a basic form of simulation. So you know, in that, you're not gonna see anything actively draining, but these would be very, like, weepy. These would be, you know, highly exudative, okay? Keep going. Anything else? Concrete, Rex. Potentially, yep, okay? So, so feel this. Necrotic? Go ahead, Ruth. Epibly, I don't know how you say it. So epibly? epibly? So I don't see any epibly here. On that cup Which one, here? Yeah, mm -mm. or no, what about no. the bottom? So if you were to palpate, which we'll do in a second, definitely some what? So it's hardened. Oh. Come on. Starts with an I. Induration. That a girl, Ruth. Induration for sure. Okay? And then what did you feel? Feel the difference between here and here. Come on. There's a, there's a clear difference. It's uh, uh, leather. Okay, so this is extremely hard. Okay? Let's pause there. Okay? So this condition is, it, this really reflects what we call venous stasis. Okay? So in that, this leg is going to have the presentation that we just described. So let's talk about the etiology in alignment with the pathophys, okay? So what is causing this? So think about the words I use, venous stasis. So let's start with the first word. So it's, we know we have a what? Problem in the veins. Okay, so it's a vascular issue, but specifically with the veins, veins okay? And there's a stasis issue, which means what? It's not draining. It's hard to circulation. Okay, impaired circulation, keep going. I heard a few different things. Pulling, pulling blood's pulling. Tatiana? No blood flow. Okay, from where to where? Up. Good job. So no. return, return blood flow, right? Okay, so the etiology of this you know, issue is that I have active blood circulation to the extremity, but not back to the circulatory system, okay? So I, I have a stasis of the blood, okay? So what occurs within that stasis then? So if I have blood pooling in this extremity, what's gonna happen? Yes, potentially, potentially, but I still have blood flow. Edema. Edema is definitely key, okay? So I have blood pooling, what's gonna happen? Potentially, yep, good, that's, that's definitely a risk factor. What else? Edema? Yep, I, I have a dilatation of the vessel itself, right? So I've got varicose veins. So in this case, I'm gonna really maintain the stasis of blood flow, but the blood that pools begins to what? Begins to die, begins to die, right? So I've got you know an active lysis of cells, and then potentially, go ahead, Josh, I heard you. Same thing Genevieve said. You said co coagulation. coagulation. I begin to potentially coagulate, okay? So, in this case, what happens is because of that stasis of blood flow, and I, I still have a blood flow to the extremity, but I don't have return, I potentially, you know, begin to ulcerate, okay? So, the cause of this ulceration is specific to the skin's expansion, okay? Once the epidermis breaks, I have this very edematous, 
exudative, weeping, irregular wounds, okay? So this is a good example of one. Let me just go through these terms real quick. So we have varicose veins. We're gonna stick with this. So this would be called a, a venous stasis ulcer, okay? This just describes an open granular wound bed that's healing. Here we just have palpable edema that you guys will feel in a second. I have petechiae, I have a better varicose vein, I have escar, okay? This is probably, let's actually stick with this one. So this actually is a little better than this one because it really shows multiple different effects. So I have an erythematous peri wound, right? Which that's actually a very large peri wound. I have an irregular wound margin with both escar, a little bit of slough, and some granulation, okay? You guys see this, this tissue here? Yeah. Okay. You'll never remember this, but I'll tell you what it's called. This is called lipodermatosclerosis. Okay. This is an irreversible syndrome. Once this occurs, I have a sclerosis, or a sclerosis, I have a sclerosis of the skin due to the actual blood and you know, the pooling of the blood and the stasis of that venous blood flow now rupturing and lysing over time. So it, it bleeds out and then it attempts to escape. So it comes up into the dermal and epidermal layers and it stains the skin, okay? So lipodermatosclerosis. And then that staining over time hardens and sclerosis those external layers. So on when you palpate this, it's very hard. You'll see this a lot. You'll see this a lot, especially in our obese population, um, our patients that suffer from, you know, a lot of the cardiovascular illnesses that lead to this state. Uh, and then you often, you also see this attempt, uh, occasionally with patients that have lymphatic drainage issues as well, okay? But that's that. This here, I actually don't really know what this is. This could just be some like macerated skin, which is pretty common. Um, and then you can see here, there's an ulcer on the plantar aspect of the foot, but another key finding in venous stasis is overgrown toenails. Why is that? Because I have a high flow of circulation, so I still have a lot of perfusion but then nothing's returning, so these toes are gonna to continue to grow, so an overgrowth, another classic telltale symptom, okay? But the key here, cardinal symptoms, cardinal features, what? Edema, right? Look at how big this leg is, irregular ulcerations that are highly exudative, weeping, and very difficult to manage in terms of that drainage, okay? So in focusing here, now let's go back. We know the cause, so how do we treat it, okay? Let's start with number one, don't overthink this. Don't, go ahead. Don't believe it. Okay, so you went a little too far. Go ahead, Christy. Uh, elevation. Okay, there's one basic intervention. It's not gonna solve the issue, it's gonna help. Elena. I'm gonna say dilative or cleaning the wound. So don't focus on the wound care yet. Focus on treating the issue. Didn't Christy just say she said elevate the feet? So that's, that's a basic intervention. Oh. Jacob. Uh, compression. That a boy, that a boy. The gold standard of treatment for this disorder is you have to compress, okay? You have to return the venous blood flow, all right? So the venous stasis, you have to compress. Now, the goal here, and really in alignment with that goal, is to return the blood flow, okay? And the way that we best accomplish that is through triple layer compressive wrapping, okay? So in the inpatient setting, we would use triple layer compressive therapy, but there are a lot of devices that are on the market now that are better than what I would show you, okay? I thought she gave me a card. I do, this is more Valley Press. That's what I was gonna say. I, was gonna say. I, had to, I had to stop before I came in. Okay, so I'll show you one, okay? So I need a volunteer. Come on, Nicole. Nicole, patient's in the bed, you're just gonna elevate the leg. So just put your hands behind the calf, please. Okay, so. Would you um, dress the wounds first? Yeah, I'm gonna, we'll get to that, okay? So, triple layer compressive therapy. First and foremost, I'm gonna start with most distal aspects, so at the toes, and then wrap up behind the popliteal fossa, okay? So, I see this a lot, I'll show you guys this, this I expect you to know. Pay attention to the curlex, right? So the curlex wrap as it unfolds, it's rolling out. Just like I could never in my entire life, if I have dated a woman and she put the toilet paper this way, she's gone. She's out, right? <laughs> you, you, you roll it down, okay? So the reality of it is, is think about what I'm about to show you. If you're going this way, you're already going the wrong way and then you're rolling this way, okay? 
So roll out. It's just 10 times easier, okay? So the first layer I would actually do with an adhesive bandage or like an ace bandage, okay? So Genevieve, I would dress the wound, which we'll get to. You, you good? Okay. Well, yeah. And you're just the holder. <laughs> and then I would wrap, okay? So in doing so, if I had that ace, I'm gonna start at the foot, okay? So Nicole, now, just for the purpose of this demonstration, because I don't have an ace clip, that a girl, okay? So I'm gonna start here, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do, so there's two ways to kind of start. You can start behind the ankle, which is another good, good technique, or I can come here, I got you, right? I'm gonna wrap, now watch. From here, I'm gonna wrap be behind the ankle, and then I'm gonna make my way up. The key with compression is that you need tension and then you need overlay, okay? So there's a general rule of thumb in wound care. So our tension is specific to, we say, anywhere between 50 and 75%, and then our overlay is 50%. Does everybody get that? Yeah. Now, this is subjective, right? The overlay is also going to be subjective, but keep in mind that the overlay is 50%. So what I lay down, I wanna wrap 50% of what was previously laid down. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 50 to 75% tension, 50% overlay. And then I'm gonna go up the leg, okay? Tension, so typically when I have someone holding, when I come back around, I'm gonna pull my tension and then I'm gonna wrap. And I'm also working with who? The patient. The patient. So if the patient tells me that that's way too tight, I'm gonna slow my tension, okay? I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna tense, I'm gonna wrap. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna tense, I'm gonna wrap. For the purpose, I'm gonna come back down so we can go back to the wound. That's a single layer, it's a single layer triple layer compressive therapy okay go ahead Edith. We don't wrap Thanks, the full, yeah. no oh. you got so why don't we wrap it Edith? no oh. keep going so somebody walk right now somebody walk go ahead there you go so if that heel is wrapped right that's what my leg's gonna feel like so i have to dorsiflex in order to walk right so if that heel is wrapped i'm gonna be like this i'm gonna be like this i'm not gonna have dorsiflexion Okay, so we keep the heel open. Great question, Edith. Is that wrapping is uh, similar to like athletes who get uh, the ankle? Pretty similar. Right? Yep. Good job. Thanks, Google. So, that was a curl X, Jacob. When you say 50% overlay, is that like each time you wrap, you're covering 50% of the wrap and then the other half is like new on the leg? Yes. So, whatever's laid down, I want my next wrap right, my next wrap coverage, to cover 50% of what was previously laid down, okay? All right, so triple layer compressive therapy, I would start this with an ace. Then I would go to curl X, and then I would finish with curl X. That's just my preference. But ace is gonna give the best stretch on that first primary layer. The primary layer is always going to be what touches the skin, okay? And then I would wrap with the rest. Now I mentioned that there are better products on the market, okay? There's some really, really good products that I can send to you guys if you have interest, but those products do a few different things. One, it's a single layer, but it provides, the goal here and why we do triple layer is because the other goal is to return the, the venous blood flow most effectively and efficiently is we want graduated compressive therapy. So the other thing I didn't mention is that at the most distal end, the foot, that's gonna be your tightest area of wrap. So as I come up to the knee and behind that popliteal fossa, that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm reducing my graduation, okay? So I'm reducing my tension, but the overlay remains the same. I forgot to tell you guys that. How do you keep it up? Like, so, how do you keep it from slipping down? So I would tape it at the top or I would clip it with an ace clip. Yep, you guys all know what an ace clip is. Teeth and teeth, you pull and then you pull, right? Okay, so with this, and those newer products on the market, which are relative to like the past eight to 10 years. So the products in the, on the, the market, I, I honestly use outpatient mostly because the hospitals won't have them, okay? But there's a really good compressive wrap that provides clear graduation. The way it works is you use a card, comes with a card, and then inside of the wrap, all the way up the wrap. So when you stretch the wrap, then you, you place the card to the wrap, and inside the wrap are going to be different line markings or demarcations, and they're color coded. And when you stretch it based upon how far you stretch or how less you stretch, that card is gonna to match to the tension. And it's gonna tell you exactly what you're at. 
So it's going to tell me 30 millimeters of mercury. I stretch it more. It's going to tell me 55. I stretch it more. It's going to tell me 65. Does that make sense? So down here, I'm like this. I take my card. I'm 65. Midway, I'm 55. Behind the knee, I'm at 30. That makes sense? But it's a single layer. But I can control that because I have that card. Can everybody visualize that? I'll send it to you if you can. But that device, really good, machine washable. It can be used for the lifetime of the patient because the challenge with this is that, that weeping exudate, okay? So what sucks in the inpatient side is this is what you're working with and you, you're changing these pretty frequently if this patient remains weeping, okay? Whereas the other device, you're at, you're in home, right? I could take it off. Uh, you know, the goal is to keep it on for the majority of the day. So roughly we say, you know, anything shy of just eight hours, that's your average sleep, right? But even that, really you wanna get at max, I mean, excuse me, at minimum 20 hours a day. There's a large study done in the New England Journal of Medicine that showed with compressive therapy that for maximum efficiency, it was actually like 22 hours a day, but that's just so unrealistic, right? So 20 hours, keep that in mind. So when they're sleeping, we definitely want compression on, okay? But they can take it off, take a quick break and wash it, all right? Really good device out there. So in outside, outside of compression, that's how we treat what, guys? Venus. Good job. That's how we treat the venous stasis. That's the issue. Okay. So the etiology or the cause of these ulcers are the stasis of blood. Okay. Now coming back here, right? Just go back to Tuesday and what we'll, we'll cover today. So here we're just going to clean this wound bed. So we'll get to that there. So I'm going to prep this wound bed. I'm going to address it based upon its drainage in terms of moderation. And then I'm going to dress this and then I'm going to wrap. Okay. Any questions with venous stasis? Okay, edema, irregular wound margins, highly exudative wounds, overgrown toenails, okay, petechiae, erythema, okay, lipodermatal sclerosis, which don't, you don't have to remember that word. Sorry, which okay. one is the erythema? The erythema is going to be here, all of that red. Okay. Even. Yep, okay, varicose veins, very common. Okay, let's move to the opposite end of the spectrum. Go ahead, Josh, look up. Go ahead and describe this. Maceration. Okay, maceration where? Um, that's the cream, right? So maceration is gonna be soaked. That's gonna be macerated. This one not, Genevieve. Maceration, think about when you get out of the pool. On the bottom of your feet. Mm -hmm. no? That's a little different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amputated? Okay, potential amputation or loss of gangrene. digits. Oh, I thought it was gangrene. Gangrene, yep. Yeah. That is definitely gangrene there, but I have a, a loss oh. of the fifth <laughs> digit. What else, come on. Escar, keep going. It also has overgrown toenails. Okay, potentially, but also what? Loss of toenails, Loss, yeah. right? Keep going. What's, just now look at the difference. Now you're comparing. Fragile. Very skinny, okay? You can't see it because these models don't necessarily show it. Another cardinal symptom, no, right? Like, no, like hair? No hair. No hair, okay? No hair here, okay? How about temperature-wise? I didn't mention Cooler. This. Here? Warm. Warm. Okay, here, cold. Oh. So this is arterial insufficiency, okay? Venous stasis, arterial insufficiency. So what's this issue? Let's talk etiology. Okay. Low oxygen perfusion. Okay, so I'm go, I'll go there. Okay, Tatiana, hold that, my physician, right? So she'll explain in a second, or she'll say it. So right, so here, I have a lack of blood flow, or what? No blood, no no blood, blood flow. flow, okay? So this is arterial insufficiency. So I'm not circulating the extremity, okay? So that's, that alone is a major issue. Go ahead now give me the actual etiology of the physiology, of the pathophys. Hypertension, atherosclerosis. Okay, so she mentioned two things. So hypertension, yes, definitely a factor. Atherosclerosis, another major factor, okay? So what's the difference between athero and arterial sclerosis? Start with athero, Genevieve, give me one. Atheros hardening of the... Um Vessels and narrowing. Okay. That's arthro. You oh. switched it. Yeah. You switched it. It's okay. okay. So you describe what? Arterial sclerosis. Okay. Arthro is okay. 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 Yes. Good job, Genevieve. Okay. I agree on the test, so we got no Yeah. Did everybody hear that? Arterial sclerosis is hardening of the vessel. Okay. So the vessel, as we circulate, has to be able to what? Has to be able to adapt and flux, right? So I have to be able to contract as well as relax contract, relax, the vessel mimics the heart, right? So if I have a hardening, 
it's not contracting and relaxing nearly as well as it should, okay? That's the sclerotic effect. And if it's plaquened, I'm not getting what? Oh, Enough man. blood flow, okay? Two primary issues with arterial insufficiency are both. Arterial and atherosclerosis, often caused by hypertension, diabetes, other cardiovascular diseases, hyperlipidemia, um, and a multitude of other disease processes, okay? Another key feature here is if you take a look, we said irregular wound margins, right? What do these look like? Punched out. They have a punched out appearance. Very regular wound margins. It's almost as like I took a stamp and punched the wound right out, okay? And that's just how these tend to appear, all right? So here, I tend to see a lot more eschar in the digits or even some gangrene. Loss of digits where if I touch this fourth digit, it's coming right off, okay? This is already gone. You see some ulceration. We tend to see with arterial insufficiency much more plantar ulcers, okay? And this also goes hand in hand with our diabetic foot ulcers, okay? But to specifically describe what you thought was maceration, that right there is actually what? What do you guys think? So is this gonna feel macerated and wet or is it gonna feel, feel it, okay? So this wouldn't necessarily be induration, this would be what? Anyone? No, it's okay, it's okay, Ruth, you just wanna use the term. Okay, anyone? So this would be what? The formation of? Nope. No, that's what Ruth used. So this, yeah, it's okay. So this would be the formation of a scar, right? And this is a sclerotic condition that leads to that, that sclerosis. So this is hard and it's going to begin to scar around the wound margin, which is very common because I have no blood flow. Okay, all right? So this condition, right? Cool to the touch, punched out appearance of the wounds. Are these wounds weeping or are they dry? dry. dry. Very dry, okay, right? So easier to manage the wound, not easier to manage the condition, okay? How do we treat the condition, guys? Arterial insufficiency. Okay, okay, so I hear two different things. So I hear vasodilators, yeah. potentially, mm -mm. right? So I need blood flow, I need blood flow. So I'm not, so stick with vasodilators potentially, but that's not gonna treat my condition. I heard an angiogram here to do what, Tatiana? Okay, so I could potentially send this patient to vascular, right, to IR, and they'll go down to interventional radiology and they can have an angiogram which may, if I have a significant large vessel that's plaquened, I can dilate that and do a balloon angioplasty to open that vessel back up to get the blood flow. Let's say that doesn't work. Hang on. Okay, this, I heard that. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say catheter Stent, stent. Stenting, another key, okay, to open a blood vessel, right? Get that active blood flow. If that doesn't work, Potentially, potentially. Can you do yep. angioplasty where you connect another artery to that or no? no. Oof! So that wouldn't be an angioplasty, that would be what? That would be a bypass. That would be a bypass graft, okay? So an angioplasty is where you open the vessel with a balloon, right? So with the bypass, and if you're grafting, right, or if you're just bypassing vessels, that's where I was going, Ruth. Good job, okay? So that's, lo that's last, last solution, right? So we do everything we can to you know, not get to that point, but that active circulation needs to be redirected. Excuse me, I pointed there, here, okay? So if the angiogram with angioplasty doesn't work, if that is the cause, or if my stent doesn't work, and if my drugs don't work, I have to go to a bypass, okay? I have to redirect the circulation to then you know, create a, a new collateral circulation to actively perfuse this extremity. Sorry, really quick. So you said drug, angioplasty, stent. There it is, spot okay. on, Ruth. Yep. You're gonna start pharmacologically, see if there's improvement. If not, you'll go to angiogram with potential angioplasty or stenting, and then you would send to vascular down to the OR, where you would have to bypass this and create new collateral circulation. The key with this as well, so with both of these, I. I Let's just go back diagnostically. How do we actually, outside of physical presentation, how do we actually diagnose both? Ultrasound. Good job, Tatiana. A vascular ultrasound study. 
So in this one, we're gonna be specifically looking at a Venus Doppler study. And in this one, we're gonna be specifically looking at an arterial Doppler study. But just remember both, in order to diagnose definitively, I need an, I need a, a Doppler ultrasound, okay? So this, you would you know put an order for a Doppler study and then they would come up. So the ultrasound tech would come to the bedside if the patient was stable and they would Doppler these extremities. There's a challenge with both of these conditions. You guys ready? Here's the freaking curveball. Nine out of 10 times, it's mixed etiology, okay? Why is that such a curveball? So I'm getting, because of disease process, right? I'm getting a mix of etiology. Why is that such a challenge? Don't overthink it. So go back to how we treat this one. Go back to how we treat this one. Because you want circulation for one and you want like to push the circulation Good in job. a different direction. Good job. So you're trying to do both. So speak to me about treatment. So what are we doing here? Say a lot We're compressing, right? Do I want any compression here? No. No, right? That's the challenge. So if I, if I get a, a Doppler study and my recommendation as a WCC, I will often, if I see potential presentation of both or potential mixed disease, I'll off the bat recommend from the provider that we get a, both a venous and arterial Doppler study, okay? Because I wanna know if I have any arterial you know, non-perfusion, okay? So once I've ruled that out, then I'm good. I'll stick here, right, with treatment. If not, if I have mixed disease, I have to rethink the strategy, and we would have to rethink the strategy, right? Because then the strategy is not going to be graduated multi-layer compression, because then I might reduce my blood flow altogether. So then I might have to think more pharmacologically or based upon how I can get collateral circulation first and then go to compression. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Mixed etiology is what you're gonna see most commonly, unfortunately, okay? What's the only way we'll know that definitively? Good, good job. So Doppler studies, okay, both venous and arterial. All right, good stuff. Questions here? Okay, we need this table. Keys, good, okay, all right. So, Chris, so you can pause the video if you want, because now.